is that I, I was kind of disappointed because like we had a lot of pre-show for the last episode yeah. where it was like 20 minutes of us just talking, but almost none of it was usable because Brit hadn't recorded the entire time. So it was like we were talking in the thin air for most of it. <laughs> No, I don't blame you for that. That's just a, a consequence. Oh, no, I, 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 I don't blame you. Yeah. No, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Believe me. Back in the day, didn't we do like an after show? And Tom, back in the day, what? Back in the day, didn't we do like an after show, which was like all the bonus stuff? Yeah, I used to edit those separately. Okay. Every, everything that I cut out of the video. Um, but then, um, I, but then I got, <laughs> got, I hardly knew her. Wasn't me. Ah, <laughs> uh, you notice how I acknowledged Tom there, huh, guys? <laughs> I'm, I'm never going to let the, the woman thing and this, this is the greatest moment of my life. <laughs> Dude, Tom and Brit, those bastards. <laughs> All right, no, we're gonna do a we're gonna do a, a Ruby reaction uh, until I get epilepsy. From the, um, throwing lights in my face, or we can just wait here and help, hope the stroke just takes him. Like if you just we just sit here and just the entire time just hoping it'll trigger. <laughs> yes, it's like waiting for an effect to proc in a video game. I have a legit question for Ruby. Yes. All right. All right. I do want to know which one of us read the books and like everything extra and which one of us just watched the show i just watched the show i've read after the fall and roman holiday and i have the other two but i haven't read them yet i can't read cool yeah understandable <laughs> i am not i'm same as dash I, wa- I watched raymond read the first one and most of the second one okay yeah i've read the first one and the second one i've not read anything beyond well i've read a little bit of roman holiday and i kind of fell off of that that was uh for a number of reasons. Roman Holiday was the one I act- I enjoyed the most. You see, the minute I heard that Neo had a split personality, I was like, all right, no, I'm not a fan of this. <laughs> I think that's one of the lamest things. <laughs> the minute I found out her real name is Trivia. Trivia Vanille. <laughs> trivia. Okay. Trivia, the thing yeah. me and my best friend do every Thursday. <laughs> but the reason I'm asking, uh, in, the, in this case, for me and Brit's sake, if something comes comes up in the show, can you let us know that that is what it is instead of just like, oh, okay, and then moving on? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. you guys are like, oh, yeah, there's that, and we're like, okay, crickets. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, perfectly fine. Yeah, no problem. Please and thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Last week on Ruby, we landed on the island slash world slash thing. I don't know if it's really like a, an island or a continent or what have you, but- A game board piece. What? We landed on a Mario Party board. We landed in Fortnite. The fairy tale, that's what they said. Oh, don't remind me that that's what they- Yeah, sorry, they landed on a fairy tale. <laughs> that was the immediate thing that they jumped to, is like, oh, we're in a fairy tale. It's like, no, that's why would you jump to we that? We are near by the Tilted Towns. <laughs> <laughs> was there anything of major note from last- The monster, maybe? I don't know. That monster was cool. <laughs> the Jabberwalker was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Monster's cool. Yeah. Something I've noticed in the comments is a lot of people are bringing up a, a fairy tale from that wasn't used in the show, that was in the book. Uh, I think it was- uh, the girl who fell from Earth or something like that? The girl who fell through the world or something like that. The, the girl who leapt through time? <laughs> the great movie. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that's good. That's not in Ruby. They're saying <laughs> that the mystery girl in the opening is the girl from that story. Uh, Alex, I think her name is. Okay. Okay. Oh, Alex, Alice. Okay. Whether or not that's actually the truth, we'll find out, I, I'm sure. But that's I figured it was worth mentioning since we were... Debating, like, is that Neo? Is it not? Yeah, other theories being that it's Penny in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how that would work out, right. but that's just... <laughs> For times the charm? I mean, she definitely has the uh, skin tone closer to her dad. Yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah. True, and she did get isekai but nobody knows to which world. Yeah. <laughs> get isekai your friends follow you, they get to keep their bodies. Man! <laughs> Stinks. I mean, her body, yeah, her body would have fallen through the earth, so. Oh my god, you walk up upon your actual body, just like, oh, <laughs> weird. I'm dead. It's like, these animals didn't think to bury me? It's like the whole red versus blue thing after church got blown up. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Uh, red versus blue. There were there were some dispute we hardly knew ye. over Ruby not and Yang not having a super big hug. They're in a it bit was of a really funk. weird way to start this whole volume. Yeah, and it's because it's a complete paradigm shift, and it, we're always going to come back to that. It's it's just weird. It's this is a strange volume at this rate. Oh, we'll see where yeah. it goes. Could be yeah, cool, maybe. strange. All righty, shall we, gentlemen? Yep, it could be Doctor yeah. Strange. All right, <sighs> here we go. We are ready. Zero, zero. Three, two, one, go. 
Bwom, 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 which we are all currently viewing. Because Rooster Teeth made it. I love that John's no, standing there crying. I don't know why it looks so funny to me. <laughs> yeah, why is Sean crying? That's a good question. Oh, he killed Penny. I know He's some, sad about some it. people were theorizing about Pyrrha. What? Yeah. Oh, no. Right. Oh, another one of the theories that was posited is that the, the, new, uh, uh, the new girl, Alex, presuming that's her name, is yeah. going to become the... The ironwork lady that we we keep seeing pop up in like the opening, like mm. um, I thought you were about to say that she's going to be the summer maiden. I was going to just. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we already posited that last week. <laughs> she was going to be a maiden. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you oh, see, like right. there in the background. Uh, yeah, I there see. Was, yeah. They, 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 there's some like rough connections they made between them, and I. Why are you hiding her in shadows like this? It's just strange. It's a weird choice. Yeah. Is I thought they did that for the first episode because we hadn't seen her yet. Mm-hmm. But then they reveal but who then, she is at the very end. It's Yeah. And I was like, maybe they forgot. We have Neo's criminal organization. Yeah. All her all her flunkies. Uh, also were people, Sean, people time skip fairy. I was surprised last week how many people were like, is this the worst opening or what? I was like, no. No, no I don't like it. So. Nah. Yeah, no, I, I, visual, visually it's beautiful. I, yeah. I think it's a it's a major mixed bag, but it's still like Way better yeah. than like three or five. Easily, God, yeah. I think a lot of openings always have to like you know grow. And five, I at least give some credit because the song they used was a banger. But mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, no, this this opening I I like I visually enjoy it quite a bit. Openings, yeah, they they that is a good point. They do have to grow on you. Yeah, definitely. Like a fungus. <laughs> we are now watching yes. The Last of Us. A fairy tale. I mean, that, that's impossible. What what are you talking about? And more impossible <laughs> than laser beams shooting out of your eyes? <laughs> Let's think about wow. this. Hi Pandora, look at in the background. Are you seriously entertaining this? Do you have a better explanation for what's going on? We're in an alternate reality. There, done. Friends. <laughs> Friends. The mice are growing on me. Yeah. Yeah. You said a talking raccoon riding on a purple wagon filled with trash. <laughs> Can I have some of what you're smoking? I mean, I call that Thursday. <laughs> I see your point of view. I'm going to go over here now. Um. <laughs> Did Weiss <laughs> land on her head or something? <laughs> what? Is like, what Why is, is going this so on with her? <laughs> yeah. It's very, like, childish. But it's, yeah. it's making me chuckle, though. Yeah. Yeah, Weiss kind of cut loose this volume, I guess. <laughs> I, think we're in the I kinda hope she's not Neo. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> it was just part of a story we all read as kids. It also ceases to exist any further off to the left of the camera turn. It's interesting to see what Weiss sort of feels like. Cause like the last island was just her entire arc, uh, basically, wait, right? Alex? Oh that's right, because fairy tales are in universe. Okay, so trapped in vines, bought a jabberwalker. And got her knife stolen by a talking raccoon. Okay, all right. So that's where she's getting supposition from. All right. We're cooking. Huh. The tree. This is the most diet Alice in Wonderland, like, name. <laughs> so copyright think, or something. I think you hit it on the head. It looks and feels like Mario Party. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. The Jinxie Peddler has it. Who? The Jinxie Peddler. Don't okay. make little cry. You're just making that up. Peddler? I don't even know her. <laughs> Can Weiss? Seriously, did Weiss land on her head? I don't know, I like it though. Like, is that why she's acting so funny? Yeah, I like the mouse. Mouse is cool. I, I, I can't help but like the mouse, damn it. I was trying not to, but oh. Oh, he's so chunky. <laughs> oh. uh. Trouble followed her everywhere she went. Oh. Yes. Well, can't you learn from her mistakes? Are we never? You I think that's know what the, she's trying to do. That's yeah. interesting. Do you think that maybe we're not actually going to see Alex at all? She's just, she's in here by virtue of Blake's knowledge. So they're following Alex's footsteps. That's why she's in shadow oh, in the opening. Oh, oh, that's why just in the opening. Oh, okay, that's they never actually huh? meet Alex. That's actually clever. Do they steal stuff from you guys too? Steal? Never. Just borrowed. They just take the things we're not looking at. <laughs> okay, this mouse, though. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> Fair enough. 
When I came to, that sneaky oh. raccoon had already grabbed my arm. Our stars. Uh, oh. Okay, Dad. That, the, oh. That. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hand touch. It's about Do you think time. Ruby knows? What? I think Ruby about Yang and Blake? Is Ruby oh, all yeah, Yang and Blake? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, that's a twist. It's like, my sister is gay? No! no it seems like the kind of thing they've sort of just kept between themselves, which is pretty cool. There's nothing left for me to go back to. Yeah, isn't it great? Yeah, that's what I was referring to yeah. earlier. Yeah, what do you mean? Like, you're... You're... Your sister's the maiden, your brother's still alive, your mom is alive, presumably. Yeah, she's got a clean slate. Yeah. Wasn't there a giant explosion at the end, though? This is- they, but they were, they were already down here. They were all in- And the, the, yeah. the city was, like, coming down. Where Iron was supposedly yeah. died. Hey, wait, hey, Weiss, wait till you hear about your dad. <laughs> Does she even know that? Does anyone know no, that? No, not yeah. yet, I don't think. But there is- There's no, there's no, no reason why she should. <laughs> There is freedom because of this, though. Like, Weiss can go in a couple different directions now as, like, a character. Mm -hmm. But, you know, she could have gone a couple different ways as a character, like, the whole series, so... <laughs> yeah. I know that was a lot to hear. I know that was a lot to hear because you were literally Penny's it's only a, friend. It's, 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 I should be like, well, I'm <laughs> used to it by now. Oh, I wonder if Weiss acting silly is, like, a coping mechanism for that? Or if she's just going to continue to act silly because... I don't know. Honestly, it's a welcome change. It they be, I, be, I just think she's been flanderized. Honestly, I think they're having her act silly because they remember that Nora's not here. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, it might actually be that. Yeah. True. Who's the voice of Little? I thought one of you thought it was Neo. Oh god, we're not gonna have Nora we're not gonna have Nora for a whole volume. Well we don't know. But no. My my guess is that Yang was um Neo. I wouldn't have any idea how to go back. Maybe I'll live by this bridge. What if <laughs> This is scary. <laughs> 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 Stop why are so cute? rocks on the roof? This mouse is the best thing to come out of Ruby. <laughs> I was gonna act- do, We'll have to make sure we check what? which uh, person voice acted. Well, no, little. now it's a lean-to. It's much more structurally sound. <laughs> yeah. Also, isn't um the- is, Do we already the know the, the, the mouse's voice actor? Royal Decree is Highness see something? Birthday yeah, party of his yeah. most royal something. Oh. Oh, look at that. The benefit of Mr. Kite. A little a little uh unicorn. Act like you belong. People are just game pieces. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. This is some long. This is See? some real like um last oh, episode of um of um There it is. Uh, Owl House vibes. So mm -hmm. It does have that. Oh. Oh, they're nice. Are they? Look, mm. Alex had to oh. barter with Jinxie for her dagger. Yeah, I think I'd rather hit him. What was that delivery? The, yeah, I didn't. Like, yeah, yeah, I think I'd rather hit him. <laughs> He's adorable and a lot older than I remember from the book. Blake doesn't like the real life adaptation. <laughs> Netflix adaptation. Yeah. Oh, oh, this guy's like forty and in high school. <laughs> this <laughs> this guy's just one of the freaking lords from. Uh, 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 oh, why am I blanking on it? The the card so, game. Which one is Yu-Gi-Oh? Oh, that's oh, the one on the left. Poker? No, can you, you know tell which game one game is Yang's arm? <laughs> uh, yeah. Inscription. Oh, okay. This is like Dora the Explorer. Sized-ish. And it also looks like same color. This is like Dora the Explorer. Unless it's like. Oh, oh I think you're right. Like, oh, what do you think? <laughs> I think you're right. I think Penny might be involved. <laughs> <laughs> that doll is going to pop up and be like salutations, and that's how we're going to know. <laughs> like it, it'll Green happen in a couple puppet. episodes. Her saddest memory uh. and her happiest. Oh, oh. Hugs are very <laughs> valuable. Maybe this yeah, they are. So cute. Golden <laughs> scepter. Me. Me. Huh? Oh, bidding war. Knowing what it is to feel loved. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Even the raccoon's the shipper. No price is too high for his majesty's birthday. <laughs> Enough hope to fill this jar. Oh, uh, ooh, yeah. oh, well, why, well, why did you frame it oh, like that? Perspective. Very exactly. poor. <laughs> why not perspective? Very poor. Oh, have enough, do you? oh there he goes. <laughs> Don't have enough hope. Of course. Well, <laughs> he's still there. 
Oh. Never rob oh. the Kecleon in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Oh, yeah, no. Oh. 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 That was oh. a living what? thing. Okay, nice. Kidnapping, oh. all right. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Thank you. I like these cards. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. Oh <laughs> that was good. <laughs> oh, sh. Uh, <sighs> all right. Uh, you know what? I, I'll give it. That's, Following that's the previously established rules, the uh, raccoon wasn't that, looking at it, so it was That's an appropriate take. reaction. And Weiss is just like, oh, f this. <laughs> Weiss just. <laughs> done with everybody's shit. <laughs> oh. Gotta get the hug back. Hug back. <laughs> Gotta They're get a priceless. lot of repayments. <laughs> <laughs> so I can get a good look at it. It's like a crystal penny sword. High five. Uh, yeah, Blake, I think you your were sword just... was like made of dust, right? <laughs> oh my god, Yang's sense of humor is back. And one of her swords. What? But we're looking for a body. I've read so many stories. Oh hey, they brought back the Blake knows how <laughs> to book. read thing. Blake likes books. I I really have to be irritated here that no one else is reacting to Penny's death as badly as Ruby, or anywhere near it. It's like, everybody else was like, she's a robot, dude. Yeah. Why, why did you even like her in the first Yang place? Yang killed her. <laughs> oh, wow, they're really, yeah, they're really sticking with Ruby's mood controls the weather. No, no, it wasn't Yang, it was Scott <laughs> I'm stupid. Alexa, play Despacito. <laughs> we are not in a book. And even if we were, we know how it ends. <laughs> Weiss is weird. Yeah. Weiss is Wait like for so... it, she's gonna come on the other side of the screen. Yep! Oh, hey, wow. there it is! Alright. <gasps> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well, I'm glad they just didn't immediately drop that. Oh, God. Oh, that was no. good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, All right, I that was enjoyed good. that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that was very well done. Like, in terms of, like... That was... <laughs> Greatly enjoyable. The streaking line across. That was, just that, that good. was highly enjoyable. Somebody sad. I'd be sad too. If I ruined the royal birthday. These guys again. <laughs> How's us? You yeah. treasonous birthday ruiners. What if I offered you something better? Like a jeweled sword. The weapon of a powerful warrior. I mean, she was like legitimately overpowered. Ruby. We're not entirely sure how she does. Ruby's being very serious. I was about to contest that, but Penny actually was pretty good even before the Oh yeah, hours. she was busted. Yeah. She gave her life for <sighs> thousands. She took a message of hope. Oh, now star. you guys are sad about it. She saw the world I'm through <laughs> better eyes. Better because they had magnification. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love these guys. You know, the stupid humor of Ruby the last few years weirdly works in this place. Yeah, it's it's they're playing to their strengths. Yeah. yeah. Like like the humor of Ruby's been awful for since like volume five, but like the cringe works for this this land. <laughs> Stop pretending we know what we're doing. Angsty Ruby. I do like right. there was a nice touch there where right. the minute Ruby started coming up with a plan, it stopped raining. <laughs> yeah. Which was a, a Then for real, it should have been raining for like eight seasons. All okay, right. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna come out and say it. I love this episode. Oh wow, that was ooh. Um I'm I'm warm I on blinked. it. I'm definitely warm on it. It's I, not the I best. I really, but really enjoyed this. I blinked like they, and they, sixteen they, minutes went by. That was crazy. Yeah, yeah like the, yeah. the the humor hit in all the right places. Weiss is freaking adorable right now. I love the mouse. Uh, Yang's getting her sense of humor back finally. Ruby's downing herself finally. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> the the soldiers I don't make me want to throw things. Uh, yeah. The raccoon is weirdly enjoyable. Uh, I just <laughs> I. I I liked the whole package. I, I'm i sure I'll think of something to dislike eventually, <laughs> but as of right now, I'm riding on cloud nine. I love this. Uh, the backgrounds this are still surprising. ugly. Yeah. But listen, though. Listen, this is very surprising because, like, I was not a fan of the episode, the humor. Not at all. Something's up with, like, uh, uh, what's her name? Barbara? I, I didn't like that acting. I, I enjoyed some of the characters. Of course, the mouse. Barbara, Barbara is a hit or miss actress. I, saw, I, I love the the, yeah. the guards, but it, it was too 
I, I know it's a cartoon, but it was Saturday morning cartoony instead of badassery cartoonery or whatever Ruby was. Highlight what I think is the main issue with this episode, because I think the humor is on point. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think the humor is on point. I think the timing is off. I agree. Yeah. The timing of everything feels weirdly languid. It feels slow and just yeah. like Weiss, like being like, I'm going to go over there. And then it takes like three or four seconds for her to walk away and then us to pan back to us. And then she's ranting in the background. And it's like, hold on. Though. It, 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 it takes a while. It's weird. Okay. But that's what I was saying. Like, there's parts that I love. Anything with Weiss here with the little uh, like blotch with the, you know, uh, speech bubble yeah. amazing that rock in the back of the head phenomenal um, <laughs> oh, that was great <laughs> that was amazing but something about yang today for me anyway well I, I i enjoy like the high five bit that's something yang sh- should do that's her that's who she is that uh, that i really enjoyed the fact that she's not moping as much as she's been doing the last few years raymond what was the line that we were like what what's up with that delivery what did she say oh it was at the auction yeah rather hit him okay that, that yeah. line was a little weird yeah that line was weird. it's yeah. because like it was a delivery yeah. for a different circumstance it felt like that she didn't get the proper context mm. there was some fun stuff though yeah Britt, what did what did you think yeah so like when um yang was like trying to grab the arm and he just decides to shoot through the arm to get the dude off that was pretty good <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good yeah <laughs> they didn't know it was a gun it's, it's like a weird sort of Thing. Sort of like when they're all sitting around debating like what to do next. I'm, like it feels like Yang should be a little more comforting towards Ruby, considering that is her sister, and like her sister is clearly like going through it right now. Right? We might be building to that. We might build to a different scene later. I, I don't know. Like, yeah, surely Yang whatever. knows that something is just not I, right with Ruby right I, now. I was going to say the issue that I'm having mostly with this episode is how spontaneously out of character people are like like yeah. i like weiss ruby warming up and being a little more goofy but this feels like it comes completely out of left field. that's why i'm asking if she <laughs> fell on her head because it's like, yeah. what, the, what the hell is going on yang should probably be more comforting to ruby and she should probably yeah. still be a little more dour after everything they spent- but now she's also kind of laughy and goofy what about like the fact that she finally found her girlfriend and they're almost holding hands. That is so lewd, you guys. What did you guys think about that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, I, I I can understand like why people are annoyed about the that moment I actually didn't mind too much. I, I didn't mind it. The hug last episode, that was kinda like, oh for the love of God. This I actually thought was kinda cute. Mm-hmm. My worry with this mm-hmm. is they're going to just keep teasing it like this oh absolutely they're gonna keep teasing yeah uh, <laughs> that is legitimately my biggest concern it's like is it he really even teasing anymore i i think it is there's been no like official no one's talked about it like <laughs> it's like well i know you don't have to talk about it necessarily you could have it be in background details and like it just it feels like they're trying their damnedest to not address it to avoid it yeah if to put it that well, way why sees them why sees them almost like get naked basically by almost holding hands and she goes <laughs> oh finally about time and you know ruby's like what that's when that sprite was like oh does yeah. she not know i think she's got more things in her mind right now but everybody just knows it's been kind of confirmed since the the fight with um i forgot its name i forgot his name it's adam. been so long adam adam yeah. that's his name yeah. that's sort of well, like see, when like, they got together uh, yes see, I, it just yeah. would feel nice if it like had some definitiveness to I, it. I, what do you need? I mean, I, 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 do you need a seven-hour sex no. scene between the two? No, <laughs> God, no, God, no. God, no. It, it's not gen log. Just lock lips for seven well, hours. What I mean okay. is it feels very in limbo. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We're yeah. doing all the motions without actually being a couple. Right. The point that I want to make is I do appreciate I that Weiss line because I think it was a much more direct acknowledgement of it than anything else we've gotten before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Genuinely, it's like, oh, there is – it's not just, you know, the these characters making cutesy eyes. It, there are other characters now reacting to that, and that's – Yeah. That is improving it in my eyes. I like that. Secondly, I really don't like the idea that they got together after Adam because your relationship is now fond- uh, is now founded on homicide, and I don't know if that's a healthy starting <laughs> if I may. place. No, if I may. If you may. I know that you guys said it's been, like, confirmed or, or it's whatever Britt said that, you know, after the fight. Um, for me, my rule is no body, no death. Well, no tongue, no relationship. Okay, I need to see some tongue. So. Yeah, and, and I was gonna say, Carrie said that 
he will never confirm it. Seriously? Never? What? Well, that's that's stupid. Really? What? What? Uh, you might as well just have like a mime on the show because I'm just going to like. Uh, editing Fat Man here for a second. Um, I got two parts of the commentary mixed up in my head. See, Carrie said this. Well, we'll never we'll never confirm anything. Because it's fun to yeah. not. <laughs> About the Pyrrha's mom scene, or the ghost Pyrrha scene, if you watch the correct adaptation of Ruby. And then later he said this about Bumblebee. Somebody was like, can you just confirm? That's the thing where it's like, wait and see. Watch the show. You can't yeah, rush. Right. Fair enough. True love. So just know I got those two clips mixed up, and the thing Raymond's about to say is correct. This might be him talking in the meta sense. Are, are you sure it's not him just being like, I, as the meta commentarian, will never confirm anything Ah. Uh, or is it, is it, is it that he will never confirm it in universe? Cause I think there's two different things. Like a, like a, mm -hmm. a director writer being coy and being like, well, I'll never confirm it. And then like later down the line, the couple okay. get together. Like I'll never tell Ooh. who knows how, you know, you can interpret it. I'll put the, uh, I'll put the clip in. I guess my question is, is what's there to confirm? Uh, from, like that. That's why I said, like, what, what, what do we need to happen? They're, they're, they're well, no, clearly... like Dashi said, no, no tongue, no relationship. <laughs> no tongue relationship. Like, to date, they, they came pretty yeah. close to fucking. They almost held hands. So yeah. that was yeah. that was the closest for me. Like the relationship between Yang and Blake is clearly distinct from just them yes. as friends or them as a team. Yeah, you know, no, it's it's really obvious, but they don't want to. They don't want to make what, it. Like, a why thing. are they trying to sell to China? Like what's going on? Like <laughs> I mean, yeah. Are we going to make sure that we're able to distribute Ruby to other countries? I, well, I, yeah. I think though that's fair. And one thing that you actually highlighted is like, oh, their 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 relationship is distinct. That's something that's actually kind of starting to bother me now because like like we were talking about it earlier with how no one's trying to help. Yang wasn't trying to help comfort Ruby. Weiss isn't really trying to help comfort Ruby. Blake isn't really trying to help comfort Ruby. It is clear as day that Ruby is kind of in a bad mental mindset right now. <laughs> like, you can literally see it written on her face. And the sky. And the weather, yeah. And no one is addressing it. Well, Weiss is- It's literally- She's making it rain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's literally in the wrong way. Weiss is at least trying. I, I don't know how is Weiss trying. A she little? Was, she was- Yeah, I think Weiss is trying. She's not really- she cheered Blake on. She didn't even cheer Ruby Hold on. Hold on, Tom. I'm curious. Like, how is she trying, Tom? She kind of pulled her aside there and, like, she kind of tried to help to talk her through the penny thing. It's all gone. Actually, wait, no. She was mostly uh, lamenting about the fact that she can't go home. Okay, never mind. Maybe she's not trying that hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. Okay, we're in a weird spot in the story, right? Sorry to okay. cut in, but like, no, go. the characters have every single reason to be depressed. They just got their ass handed to them. They lost. Um, things are dire. They're in a completely random place while their friends are being slaughtered in a different country. Um, so they've got every reason to be upset and to like go through that and work through that. I think this is weird. Like, as you said, the reason why Weiss might be acting a little more kooky or like, uh, putting more of the comedy on Weiss is because Nora's not here. We don't normally have the, right. the comic relief around right now. So they have to balance this tone of all of them being depressed and angry at each other and also these silly, goofy jokes. And I like silly and goofy. I think Little's doing a good job mm -hmm. for the goofiness. Oh, yeah. Little yeah. is carrying the, the comedy yeah. so far, definitely. Yeah. It's that weird that weird line they, they never seem to get right where we between serious and funny, they don't know how to, like, when when's the best time to do which. They're not Wes Anderson. No. They, that's uh -huh. that's kind of the, the, the vibe I get. Is like yeah. they, they try to be Wes Anderson a little yeah. bit, and they don't quite pull it off sometimes. Okay, this kind of feels like it's the same kind of, like, them not knowing how to do comedy, but, like, more intentionally. Like, because Weiss kind of flips back and forth between, you know, silly, goofy cheerleader. Yeah, go, go, woo. Mm -hmm. And like, um, it's, uh, my, my house burned down. She's the tsundere. Yeah, she's kind of like flipping between that. But at the same time, it's like the environment changes to match the character's outlook. So it's like they're like p playing into it. Which I admire. So that's kind of what I've always wanted them to do. Ra rapid onset bipolar disorder. <laughs> yeah, you know, just make all of the characters bipolar. <laughs> God, that angle on that jar. Well, well that's what that's what I was going to talk about next. Because I don't know whether to be <laughs> angry at this or not. <laughs> Why is that? Is there, is there a rainbow dash in that jar? 
Well, that's the point, right? There's like the people <laughs> who work on shows like this. So they're not they're not completely clueless to internet culture, you know. Right. There's an eighty percent chance that this is referencing <laughs> what we think we're referencing, and then a twenty percent chance that it's referencing like, oh, they're out of hope, and Penny was their hope, and oh, you know. Okay. I mean, why not both? <laughs> <Porque no los dos. laughs> is this loss? <laughs> But like, really? Is this is this how easy it is to satisfy you that they just make reference to p- memes in Ruby? <laughs> <laughs> is this is this yes? the jangling keys I, that you'll appreciate? I object to that being called a p- <laughs> meme. I think that goes beyond and goes straight to just a downright object degeneracy. <laughs> degeneracy. <laughs> like it's a thing. It's like if they just copy pasted the Vaporeon copy pastor in there somewhere. Did you know that in terms of male, human, and female Pokemon breeding? Vaporeon is the most compatible Pokemon for humans. Don't tempt them. That'll be next episode. It's like, ha, ha, I get it. That's a that's a reference to a thing that's disgusting on Twitter. We'll, 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 we'll start learning how the toy soldiers are actually the perfect species to breed with humanity. Like, I, oh no. <laughs> Oh God! Is it because they always have wood? Um, no, I'm. I wanted to say about about the, the change in tone. And, and at first, my first, you know, when I said that I don't like this comedy. It's weird. It's it's cringy. But after listening to you guys, and especially watching the world, you know, adapt to the world, and with this background and, and story, you've realized we're all cringy. You're bu- I'm, <laughs> I'm buying it. I'm buying it more. What? <laughs> you realize we're all cringe. What's really weird is like one of the most grounded uh, jokes they told was the one that ended up being the flattest to fall was the Yang line because yeah. that was all based on delivery. It, it was like the like what should have been a like oh. That's our Yang was a, why did you say it like that? Yeah, what? <laughs> that was really weird. Yeah. I don't know if that was intentional or not. I don't think that was intentional. I think that was a, just a yeah. bad line. But like what I'm saying is that there's enough, there's like, there's like plausible deniability in this volume. Because, like, there's probably more legitimately funny things in this episode than in, like, volume seven. Yeah. Like. Yes. Yes. I would, I would out of this. the ten yeah. jokes they tell, I'd say six of them hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The getting the hug back that was great. Oh, yes, uh, the yeah. rock was pretty good. Probably <laughs> the new funniest joke in Ruby. Yeah, like, <laughs> Bernie No finally has a finally has a competitor. Yeah, a successor. And what's funny is that Bernie knows an ad lib, but I think that one might have been very intentional, which I think is great. <laughs> I don't know if the animators would ad lib like that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it was something that was a little more planned. Like that was that was intentional from the writers more so than like the animators or actors coming up on the spot and then yeah. being like, "Oh, we'll run with." Y- y- yeah, yeah. Great. Were you saying something? Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to the natural conclusion of this sort of um, hopelessness mini arc that they've got going on, right? Because, like, I I did really like the line the raccoon said, when, like, oh, I can give this to you, it'll be enough hope to fill this jar. And looks around and says, oh, you don't have any, do you? (laughs) I actually, I like that. That was cool. I I honestly thought she was going to give up her hope, and that was going to be why she was... Hmm. So depressed. In in times of hopelessness, like hope being injected into the story is like where it goes. So I'd be expecting. I'm just theorizing out here. But like next episode is when we're gonna see Jean come back as, uh, at like the birthday party or something as like a quick, royal knight. Quick question: What was it that Yang had to barter with again? It was knowing the feeling yeah. of being loved, or like knowing what it's the, like to be loved. Why did you guys freak out? The fact that she had to hesitate. Oh, the fact she had to hesitate on that. That goes back to her abandonment issues from Raven. Y- yeah, I was okay. I was gonna make a joke about her mom. Like, just, just making sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm back to the um I'm I'm back to the town. I'm going through it and there's there's little things in there that are kind of fun. Uh they, there's a there's a shop called Domino Flooring and something else. <laughs> uh there's cribbage, I think body and nursery store, I think. There's <laughs> Patty cakes. Oh, that's <laughs> oh good. my god, that's precious. <laughs> what I like is that they're kind of embracing this this kind of I, I get the Saturday mor- morning cartoon vibe from you, Dashy, but it's more just like I think the timing of things isn't landing right. I actually kind of like they're embracing this more childish kind of joking mindset because it kind of yeah. goes back to the the more it rings to me of the more honest adolescent humor of RVB. If that makes any sense. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I never watched RVB, but go on. I uh, it, it it feels like they're just having fun telling jokes that they like, and it's it's ringing. It, it feels less forced. Yeah, that's what it is. It, like I don't feel like they have to like jam it in with like a f- 
and stick. Yeah, going and dry. Okay. Yeah, like mm-hmm. they've had to in the last couple volumes. Yeah, it, it feels like it feels like a natural like cringe. It's still like it's cringy, but it feels like a, like they're not forcing it, and I think that's why I enjoy it a little more. Yeah, and it, it, the the, it, the biggest issue just comes down with delivery, and that's really. N- that's not the worst problem to have if the joke is good. Like a lot of these jokes are carrying Weiss freaking out as much as I have issues with her, per, her, her characterization. The, it could work. It just needs a little bit of a, you know, a little, little timing tweak here or there. It needs a little bit of a snap to, uh, it, a lot of it does still land. It just, it kind of like lands off center. Yeah. I have a question. Um, All right. Yeah. What was your interpretations for when uh, Ruby was sad and then, you know, it rained and the guards were like, oh, someone's crying. Like they knew automatically that that's what it was. Do you think it was just that for that moment? Or is this going to be like Ruby's dream and she's going to wake up and, oh, Penny's <laughs> alive again, like <laughs> a couple volumes down? I, I think it's the, 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 de- the denizens of this world understand how this world works. I was, I, was, I was literally about to say the exact same thing, Raymond. Yeah. Okay. It's the rules. Yeah, yeah. Me too. I don't think it's a dream per se. That'd be <laughs> wild. Um, I mean, it's, yeah. The, the others haven't clued. I don't even know if Ruby's clued in, but it's pretty obvious that it's, when it rains, it's because filming mm-hmm. because someone's upset or crying. My question is, do you think this is a... Uh, this world revolves around Ruby? Yes. Or no, that's just a momentary, this happens for everyone. Um, no. It was... No, I don't think it does. Uh, okay, just make it sure. I think it does revolve around Ruby. I and, and that's kind of what I wanted to get at with, like, the dream thing. Like, okay. Ruby is the only one who's s- mm-hmm. sad mm-hmm. right now, right? Yeah. I mean, like, Weiss is, like, angry, and Blake is, like, horny. yeah but like ruby is actually like depressed like she's reacting to what happened in the real world right in uh you know a more Mm -hmm. believable way and again i see i don't know if this is just ruby being written like ruby or if it's intentional (laughs) but like weiss's reaction doesn't make a lot of sense when she's like oh god I lost everything it's just like what about you didn't like any of that stuff you, uh, you, you don't you don't know your dad is dead like there's no way she could have learned yeah, that I, know. I think she knows her sister has the maiden powers yeah 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 cause, well, cause and like she has no reason to believe that her mom or brother got hurt like it's it's like her her reaction to you know was kind of weird no i don't want to say like out of character i just want to say like but it's weird in a way that we would expect ruby to be from a bad writing perspective but here it is in this world where it's like only ruby is reacting naturally to what we should expect to happen Mm -hmm. this is like a world that's tied to ruby's life or her emotions okay i contrast that that I think the environment of this world reacts in it reacts to people's emotional states. I, I think that it's more so something like that. Though I think you make an interesting point that the other three members of the team aren't acting all that realistically in relation to things. And I'm wondering if there's like a there's a mental effect going on here where like they're going to get more and more wrapped up in the 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 fairy tale aspect of this world they're going to get more and more wrapped up in becoming a part of this world and ruby's going to have to be the one to pull them back oh they're getting sucked into the world he's something like that well that's interesting that you say that because in the opening they have you know they're walking walking and then the other three start running faster and faster while ruby still stays in the walking i wonder if that is has some kind that's of, what makes oh, me yeah. think so, that yeah that's something to do with it it's like the apathy but with Candyland. yes yeah yeah kind of yeah like, it sucks you in mm-hmm. kind of yeah and like another thing to i don't know go back to like my point whatever it was is that when they're running and ruby is walking she's not falling further behind them which kind of makes me think that the the world is following her not the other way around. Well, she is lagging behind physically. Like, she is a physical distance more behind. Mm-hmm. It intrigues me that there, there's a lot of different possibilities with this here, and it's all very character-focused. And that's one thing that I appreciate about this episode, and I, I can yeah. say this, 
they haven't forgotten the events at Atlas. And that's what's, what's kind of keeping me grounded. In Weiss's case, she knows a bit too much. <laughs> yeah. But like, you know, <laughs> Ruby at the very least is reacting very realistically to losing her, losing one of her besties. <laughs> her best robot friend. Yeah. <laughs> Again. <laughs> and like her getting, getting Penny's sword and like this entire episode kind of being framed around it and then using that sword again as a prop to try and get into this this thing and dis- the way she described Penny, mm-hmm. it gives me a hope that there's going to be a little more bleed over between the two worlds in terms of relevance than than I initially thought with that first episode where I kind of felt like it was going to remain very dichotomized between the two. Sure. Where like the characters are legitimately going to start bringing their world into this fairy tale and then maybe they'll bring this fairy tale out into their world somehow. They'll merge. Oh my god, they bring a rat army to def- defeat Salem. <laughs> hey, Britt. Yes? You were saying again, and I wanted to know if it was about Weiss, because I have something to say about Weiss. Go ahead. Um, not necessarily about Weiss. Okay. It was more about Ruby stepping into more of the leader role, okay. which is always nice to see. Like, Lu- Ru- bleh. like the team's bickering about what to do next, what's going on. Weiss just wants to get the hell out of there, screw the story. Uh, Yang is kind of just frustrated, I guess. And then Blake is like, no, 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 we need to follow the book and the story. And Ruby's like, yeah, okay, we need to get out of here right now. I will happily give up this thing I care about if it gets us out of here quicker. But we've clearly got to do it the story way because this mm. place is, mm-hmm. this that is the rules that this place seems to be following. So <laughs> okay. it's nice to see Ruby, like, all right, managing the team and, like... I just, I just laughed because Ryan posted the... What's the word? Compromising. I feel angry that they didn't go for the, the family guy fall over uh, pose for wise <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah tom 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 i was laughing because raymond posted the wise face planting in the chat and everything but <laughs> i will i will say one note um i i don't know what it is like, maybe it was the addition of eddie and kiersey but like there's always there is since volume seven there's been one moment where i can always say that was some legitimately good writing like in in volume eight, it was Watts's uh, rant towards Cinder. I mean, every volume has had one of those. I it kind of, but in recent years, they've been like, like I actually have to stop and like go back and listen because I'm like, oh, that actually hits a lot better. I don't know. I mean, that's always been the case. Hold on, let Tom talk. I, I don't. I don't know about that. Volume five, volume five didn't really have a whole lot of that for me. Like and it, we- Weiss and Yang in the bedroom. You always took more to that than I did. And that was for me. It was just kind of like a okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Volume six they had, I mean, they tried with like the, the Jean in the park thing, but I was just laughing at how goofy the statue thing was. Volume seven had Osmond's monologue at the end, which I really liked. Volume eight had Watts's rant. And this one has, right now, it, it's a lean towards Penny, uh, Ruby describing Penny as she's offering the sword. Mm-hmm. Like the way it's worded, because there's so many times in this show where they will, they will talk about someone like how, <laughs> The show wants them to be perceived, but the, the show doesn't actually show them. Yeah. This is one where I'm like, okay, for that one moment, Ruby, you actually made me believe. Yeah, exactly. Everything you just said. Yeah. Okay. So, and yeah, so I wanted to draw attention to that because, like, that that's as the writer in me is like, okay, you, you got you got that. I have one. a problem with it all being monologues. Uh, after the Kirzi and Eddie takeover, that's kind of an issue I'm starting to notice with that. It's like, oh, all the good writing are in these soliloquies. And it's like, um, can we get good writing that's like dialogue? Not soliloquy, yeah. Or can we go back to that Yang and Weiss scene, <laughs> please? Yeah. yeah. I had that to point to volume five. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, good point, but at this point, I'll take what I can get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't this was an Eddie written episode, right? Who wrote them? Who wrote the Ren scene when he blew up? I think that was Eddie. Eddie. Directed by Paula De Can- uh DeCanny, series creator, written by Eddie Rivas. Yeah. Yeah, this is an Eddie Rivas episode. Okay. How do you pronounce that director's name? Paula De Decanini? Paula DeCanini? 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 Decanini. A Decanini. Decanini. That's probably horribly offensive. I apologize. <laughs> Is it even Italian? I don't know. Oh. That's what, that's what makes it worse. <laughs> A Bernie Burns. There. It's probably like Swahili. Like <laughs> the nerve. Matt Holum. I, I, I will. I will. I will go down the list just to make sure I get it all, all across the board. <laughs> it's your civic duty to make fun of Italians. Oh, that reminds me. I haven't looked at the voice yet. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Nobody. Nobody recognizes except for Caden and Lucy. The mouse is Lucy who? Christian. Lucy Christian. Christian. Okay. 
And that's, um... Was she also Little Miss? Yes, she was also Little Miss, and she was also the original Winter Maiden, the the old lady. Oh, okay. Oh, really? Cool. Yep. And and you know her from... I know her from a lot of different shows. (laughs) Yeah, she's all over the place. (laughs) She's a very prolific actress. She's, uh, Uraraka. Uraraka, oh. Duck from Tutu, Ochako from My Hero. Yeah, she's Nami as well. Fairy tale? Emotional damage! Sorry, you guys don't, you guys don't watch One Piece. Oh, uh, yes, yes, she is Nami, yes. Mm -hmm. Of course, we gotta have highlight Jinxie is Brendan Blabber, who I pretty sure is oh the guy that did that fan animation for ruby jello apocalypse jello apocalypse oh that's jello apocalypse yeah i'm pretty sure that's jello apocalypse oh wow oh shit oh that's cool yeah i know that because seeker was pissed (laughs) (laughs) raccoon oh i i I tell you one of the one of the biggest youtube regrets i have was not doing a reaction to this is basically ruby it got views it was really weird (laughs) i know i know i I know i (laughs) I regret not doing it because i was busting my gut laughing watching it and I wish yeah. I had recorded my reaction. Still, that's one of my biggest videos, and I wasn't even going to upload it. <laughs> On the day it came out, some someone said, hey, you should do a reaction to this. And I, I, I recognized them as a patron. So I just did it, and I uploaded it to Patreon. <laughs> and then I was just going to leave it at that, because I'm like, that video. <laughs> and then I put it online anyway, and now it's like... My, in my top five biggest videos. <laughs> yeah. Why does my name start with a Q? <laughs> Ooh, got it. Uh, so, mu- so much regret in not recording my reaction to that. Yeah. So I, I'm pretty sure that uh. that's who that is. And I, I just know that because Answer Seeker, the resident, the, the super pro Ruby troll is the only best. Oh yeah, the uh, the the new the new Knight of Balance. Yeah. Oh, he's worse than Knight of Balance in so many ways. Really? Yes. I I don't think he's worse than I mean, okay, in a lot of ways he's worse, but I don't think he's a worse like Ruby guy. Oh, you know, Answer Seeker goes he's beyond a, Ruby. It, it it's a it's a, Yeah. But he he's, he was yeah. he was angry it, about this because he sees that anyone that mildly criticizes oh, Ruby. Another one of those. You okay. have the slightest yeah. complaint about Ruby, you are immediately persona non grata. <laughs> immediately. Yeah. Um, and at- he hates that video. He hates there's something about Ruby because it dunks oh. on Ruby so much. Hmm. <laughs> and it, I think that I find that hilarious because they just they came out like, oh yeah, we'll get you for this role. It's like, all right, great guys, I'm in Ruby now. He was so pissed about it. It was great. I I, I loved every second of that announcement. <laughs> that's pretty funny. That's pretty. Odd. That's awesome. That, that's great. Hey Ruby, we'll do voice acting. Yeah. 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 I am. Yeah. Give, me, give me Maria. Give me Maria, damn it. <laughs> I will fight my no. goddamn pupils. <laughs> uh. Me and Dashie uh. can trade off, and then Tom can come in for like one episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just wanted to uh, address uh, Batman's wife's thing. Oh, yeah. You said that she knows a little too much. Oh. Are you saying that she she's saying, what exactly are you complaining about Weiss in that, in that scene? She's acting like she lost everything. Okay. When the only stuff that she lost was like physical possessions, which she had like a whole arc about not caring about. Okay. She used to be all all like materialistic, but then over the course of of time and especially in volume 4, she was like, "No, I don't, you know, she had that whole song when she, you know, when she was like, you know, like I I'm not your thing. I'm not another thing you own." Still her home country though. That was a big part of her of of her of her character arc. Right. Right. It's still her home country. Like, fellas, is it materialistic to like be upset that your home got nuked? Kind of. <laughs> right, right. And, yeah. Damn. You know, <laughs> I lost everything, just meaning that she's, you know, she's, she's depressed. Uh, yeah. She's depressed in her own way. Yeah. The first thing you're going to do is blame yourself. What else could I have done? Um, I could have done more. I mean, she did get everyone out of Atlas. Well, she lost everything. Is she talking about, like, because she's in this world, she lost everything? Or when she goes back, she lost everything? I I took it as like they're here now and that's look, it. I just took it that she was really angry she lost her beanie baby collection. <laughs> they're gonna be worth something. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> no, um you went back and, and you rewatched that scene just now. Yeah. Do, do do you think that sh- it was more of a like because we're here thing? It was her trying to talk about, you know, the sex that was happening in front of her <laughs> to to Ruby. Ruby just being blank about life and then she you know, she goes, Never mind, and then she started Thinking, I know there's a lot that happened, and Weiss being Weiss, she she was always like, 
I got to do it. I got to be the best. I got to be number one. And I just wasn't enough. And she literally just says, I just wasn't enough. So I mean, that, I mean, did, did, wasn't that her volume one character arc though? Like that's an always your entire life character arc. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's something that I would carry. I still do. Okay. This is another thing about like Ruby being bad for nine years and then suddenly trying to like drop some good episodes on us. Okay. <laughs> like it's, it's like, okay. So she has this volume one character arc and then she doesn't acknowledge it for eight years. And now she's like, oh, hey, you know, I'm back to this thing. You know, it's, it's the Fluttershy problem, right? Where everybody's like, oh, Fluttershy just learns the same lesson all over again. But like she doesn't actually learn the same lesson all over again. It's like she learned it once and then she was fine and now she's back to it. But the problem was that she shouldn't have just learned it once back in volume one. Like, it's, it's like, I, I, I don't know how to feel. Yeah. I, I don't know if this is clear. This is a very, very good episode of Ruby. I think, yeah. I think I'm, I'm following what you're, what you're saying. Yeah. But um, to me, that also may just look like a, a stage of grief. They just, it's, it's a loss they're going through. And. You know, Why can't they do it through a meme like everyone else? You mean like that penny in a jar meme? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Should we start taking questions? questions? Yes, yes. No. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Go for it, yeah. Yes. Oh, Lord. Do you think Neo will die this volume or will she get a redemption? <sighs> hmm. I don't expect Neo to die. I expect Neo to actually stay in this Neverland. <laughs> yeah. I, I, honestly, I think that would probably be the best scenario. <laughs> Like she, she forms her own mafia. Maybe she has an episode of conflict with our crew. Like maybe she's a big bad at the end. Neo staying here, yeah. But she stays here to lead that mafia. You just want her to ride that bird. I you want, just want her to ride stay there the and be the shoe bill. <laughs> <laughs> I will have pictures of Spider Man. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, all right, Raymond, Raymond. Okay, what if the shoe bill comes out with them? Oh. Ooh. <laughs> like she has a mount. All right. I, I am I am I am all for Neo riding on Salem with a shoe bill. All right. Um I I feel like killing her would first off be kind of a near possible task considering they literally can't land a hit on her for being I mean Oscar can. <laughs> um but I feel like that would be to, I feel like killing her would be too easy a solution, and also I I don't want another. Like we're already trying to do this with Emerald. I don't. We don't need another one right That's now. That's a good point. Not every villain needs to be redeemed. Yeah, I don't want her to be redeemed. Re redeemed. Redempted. <laughs> the best really you can do, I think, is just she's not really redeemed. She just decides to settle down. Yeah. <laughs> like in 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 never in ever after. I think that's really the best you can hope for. Uh, at least I think so I too. I think you raise a good point. In the Emerald is already taking up that space of the villain redemption arc. It's like I'm not expecting yeah. Mercury to be redeemed either, unless it's more of a just, eh, we're, I'm just rolling around. Because uh, I like uh, Emerald. You know, we're friends. I'm not redeemed. I'm just going to roll this way because uh, don't kill my friends, basically. Because history, yeah. He has no loyalty. Is what you're saying. So we're saying that the ending for Neo this arc would be just staying here where Salem can't get her. She could just live, live out this fantasy life. I mean, this is kind of the world she belongs in, to be yeah. perfectly frank. I think it would be cool if she stayed here and the, you know, she, she kind of like makes a deal with yeah. T. Ruby to send Cinder down here. <laughs> oh. I don't know if you saw, like, I quote tweeted a whole bunch of people that are like, what's what's your this and that thoughts on Ruby? Mm. I did that last night. And one of them was like, how do you think Cin uh, Cinder will die? And I was like, no, 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 no. I want Cinder to, to live. I want Cinder to win. <laughs> but I would be okay oh, if wait. Neo stayed down here and Cinder got trapped with her. <laughs> Oh, well, I just got an idea. I just got an idea. You, <laughs> Cinder gets trapped down there with Neo, yeah. and then she, Cinder basically spends the rest of eternity doing exactly the same thing she tried to get away from in her past, like having to <laughs> scrub floors and clean things. <laughs> that could just be her eternal punishment is exactly the thing she was trying to get away from. Absolutely. Ooh. Yeah, I'd be down for that. I also wanted to give you a hug. Okay. Because I missed you and I love you. Well, I love, I love you, you too. I still think that we need a scene where Neo stabs Ruby in the gut. I mean, yeah. That, that just needs to happen. I mean, weird kink, but okay. <laughs> no, it just needs to happen. <laughs> the revenge element for Roman is like a huge part of Ruby and Neo's dynamic. 
That's like a huge part of just Neo's character as a whole. Like that's the only thing that's driving her yeah. is to stab Ruby in the gut. And I feel <laughs> like if we're robbed of that, or she's just convinced not to, then that feels a bit like a letdown for that character. Yeah, her main motivation. Unless it makes sense, I guess. I feel like the focus on where she wants to stab is just the really weird part to me. Well, I don't really know. Specific. Like, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm just being- <laughs> hey, hey, Britt, um, I know that like we always mention that you're like, this is Neo, that's Neo. Um, seriously, though, within these four girls right now, do you think she's in there? Uh, the, the, the intro kind of like has changed my thoughts on that because like you have that other girl who could be alex but it also very much just could be neo disguised as alex okay if i had to like pick which one of them right now i guess it'd be a toss-up between weiss and uh yang more and more i've thought about it Mm. i don't think it's any of them i don't think neo is present yet Mm. she's all three of them (laughs) (laughs) nick the brit asks do you guys think they should have done a world of remnant style telling of alice in wonderland's fairy tale story Absolutely not. Kind of like how we got the four maidens back in volume three. I, no. I think what we should have gotten was something included in the um in the literal fairy tale show they put out. The fairy tale show? Oh. I want less extra material. Because every time there's more extra material, I don't look at it and read it and yes. then I have to listen to Fat Man and Raymond lecture me about <laughs> the all the extra stuff I should have watched. I'm with you. I agree. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 To me that's not canon I, and it's like prove it. it. Yeah. It's actually one of those things that like in fixing Ruby, we have a a whole lore thing that we wanted to do. We're still toying with the idea of doing like a World of Remnant style video, but the the problem that we have with World of Remnant is that in the the canon Worlds of Remnant, they always like give out critical world building and plot information as opposed to what we're kind of entertaining over on the side, which is would possibly be just it it's it's world building, but it's not really like need to know information. It just kind of like lets you know kind of how the world eventually got to the point it was. Yeah. In the the volume, that sort of thing. I've always sort of I think I've said this opinion a few times in the show. If there is like critical world building outside of the show then it shouldn't be done outside of the show. It should be done in the show. Here, here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I Know Nothing asks, how was the the eulogy for Penny in your guys' eyes? That was great. I thought it was great. I- I, Uh, Cool. Yeah, I I already- I've already went off about it. Like, yeah, yeah, I thought it was- I thought it was terrific. I thought it wasn't too long. It wasn't too short. It was just right. Actually made me give a shit about Penny for the first time since volume one. It, it served a dual purpose too, which was what was great about it. It's like she wasn't just giving the eulogy to eulogize her, though it was cathartic for her yeah. to do so. It was her yeah. bartering. And I think that's kind of a, a great reframe of it. It's serving multiple purposes. Yeah. And that's where a lot of mm-hmm. good writing yeah. lies. You're, you're kind of doing yeah. the same, yes. different thing to the same pieces of information. Completely. No notes. Actually thought it was quite good acted as well. Yes. Like the line delivery. I was like, whoa, this yes. is serious and angsty. It was it, it was almost like Ruby was more upset that the other girls weren't as upset as she was. Yes. Actually, yeah. yeah like she exactly. was angry that the others were just sort of like, ah, this this fantasy world and uh, I'm upset for different reasons. Yeah. Like, guys, my our friend yeah. just died. My girlfriend just died. Again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And stop yeah. pretending like you know everything. Let's, let's, you know, let's try this instead. Let's, let's just get on with it, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know where I saw this last, but I, I, it was a comment probably on the fact that Ruby is a lot less squeaky here. You guys agree? Yes. Like, yeah. I mean, she's yeah. sad, sure, but like it's yeah. changed. She her. sounds normal again. Yeah. R- Raymond, you told me that right. there was some place where Lindsay said that she wanted, that she didn't like the volume one performance. She said it on like Twitter or something. I heard that from actually the next person to ask a question, uh, Edelweiss. I'm pretty sure she was the one that brought to my attention that in an interview or a panel somewhere. Yeah, I've heard that too. Uh, yeah. She basically said that she... She preferred doing the squeakier voices. No, yeah, because I, I always liked the 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 deeper volume one Ruby performance better, yeah. and uh, I'm glad that it kind of made a reappearance. Here. What, I'm, what I'm worried about is it's only reappearing because Ruby is sad. I don't care. I don't <laughs> well, I'm happy that it's here. I, I'm happy that it's here. I'll but take what I can get. Uh, I mean, I wanted to carry yeah, through. That's fair. With her being. I want it to carry through with her being happy. I want her to be sad. <laughs> yes. I, th- 
I think Fat Man. I think I think you want Ruby to be voiced by Tonkatsu Sinclair. That's the problem. <laughs> I want Blake to be voiced by Tonkatsu. <laughs> Let Sinclair, me tell right? you about this great warrior. All right, she had the greatest ass. <laughs> I get what I'm saying because it was like, it was like um, to bring up my hero example. It was that when uh, in the English dub, when Shigaraki is fighting uh fucking what's his name? I love that hero. In one of the more recent seasons. Oh la 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 la. Oh uh, yeah, hang on. Spoilers, Ooh, Lamau. I took my earbuds off. I'm gonna wait. The moment where he like oh, crushes his hand and his voice goes from that normal nasally voice he goes, "These are no longer necessary," and then he just keeps it for the rest of the show. It's like, whoa, okay, yeah, yeah. But it, but it, but it shows yeah. how Shigaraki's finally letting go of you know oh, that I that infantile mentality he's always had and is adopting a more mature mindset. And it, the voice kind of goes along with that. I'm hoping, like what Raymond's saying, I'm hoping that is the case with. Ruby now, where she Dash has to safe growing to come up. Back. Okay, yeah, I've been like, I've been like <laughs> hovering, and her, and her <laughs> voice <laughs> kind of stays at pace. Okay. Sorry, yeah, sorry. I, I, I was trying to, I was trying to say it as like generally as possible in case you hadn't, you guys hadn't gotten that far. No, yeah, we haven't. no, no. It, it's a sickness. It's my, it's my fault. It's, it's crazy that fault. he kills Deku. Yeah, we're we're on we're on like episode two of season four or something. Oh, like, yeah, you're close. oh, you guys never, you guys never watched past that. We're way behind. It, it's planned. It's planned. It's planned. We've been trying. It's trying. And I, I picked it up my personal time. With Twilight, it so that's planned. all right. Yeah. Yeah. But Eric Vale just does such a great job with that with that transition, and I'm hoping this is kind of like what we're going to get something like that here. Mm. Edelweiss, uh, hi Jackie. Uh, what do you think of Blake struggling with the idea of being the moral of a fairy tale? What is that? What she's trying to do? The moral? She was worried about she- like messing everything up in the fairy tale. Like she's trying to follow the fairy tale by the letter. Oh, like she's just saying, I just grew up with this book. I didn't think I'd be living it, kind of thing. Uh, assumedly. Alex yeah. gets out of the fairy tale land by following the book. Or not by following the book, but by doing the actions that the book lays out. So like if their priority is to get out of here and Blake is like, well, guys, this is a this is a step by step manual on how to get out of here. Why are we de- why are we deviating yeah. from it? You know, also like fairy tales are like messed up. And if I found myself in one, I wouldn't want to deviate much from it. <laughs> Thank God it's a, not a German fairy tale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, are, are one of you really willing to, like, cut off part of your foot just to fit it in a glass slipper? Like, I'm good. I'm good. What the f***? <laughs> in Cinderella, that's, yeah. that's one mm-hmm. version. What, what's the, yeah. what's the, the joke? Like, oh, the German mother put her children down the bed and decided, like, Hello, children, let's read the story of the back figure that you just, and the, the, the monster that comes and eats your a- is as you if you do anything slightly naughty at home. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, German fairy tales. Why? German fairy tales are messed up, and German fairy tales uh, might be pretty messed up too. I, I understand where Blake's coming from. I think, like, I think maybe she should ease up a bit because, like, you don't know because this isn't the fairy tale. This is what you guys are actually going through. Yeah. Do you necessarily need to? Like, it's implying that Alex has already been through. Because yeah, that's the, that's the impression I'm getting is that in this world, what Alex went through already happened. Well, Wiggles the raccoon is older than Blake. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because Blake is <laughs> Wiggles. Is, <laughs> shut up! I forgot his name. Jinxies. Right. Jinxies. <laughs> <laughs> Jinxies um, the, uh, is an important character. The, um... <laughs> but yeah, like. Assuming that Blake actually, like, can age a raccoon by sight, you know? It's the funnest thing. <laughs> in the sci-fi version of Alice that came out years back, where it's a new telling of a story, but it's still... It, it, the, the original story still is canon, and there's still traces of the original story in there. Um, it might be something like that here. I mean, they're just walking around copyright. Yeah. I mean, look at those names. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> well, Alice in Wonderland yeah. must be public domain by now. It is. I, 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 I was just making a joke, but yeah. yeah. I, I'm trying to think, like, okay. because obviously, uh, like, all of the characters in Ruby are connected to fairy tales of some f- one way or another. Have we never had a character that's been linked to, like, the Alice in Wonderland story? Uh, <sighs> have we? I'm pretty sure we have. We've covered Wizard of Oz. Extensively. Oh, we have. Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Mm-hmm. Right, the guards, the Cordovan, mm. Cordo's guards. Oh, no, 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 no. Th- those those weren't Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Those were just two oh, random right. guards. But Tweedledee and Tweedledum were the guards on the train in Volume 6. Mm. D and Dudley. Uh, oh, D and Dudley. Right, 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 right. It's interesting to me because yeah, there's like a choice. huge commotion in the group that like, dude, this world can't exist. This world is weird. This is silly and ridiculous. 
But I'm thinking back to the world that they come from, where they've got dust and, and actual magic, which mm-hmm. obviously is separate from dust and faunus. And, um, that I guess, I guess to their perspective, none of it is considered weird because that's just their world. That's, that makes sense, right? At mm-hmm. least this is better than the volume five line. I was it's just, just like, no one can turn that. into a bird. <laughs> Why would they yeah. do that? <laughs> yeah. This is better than the magic can exist bullshit from volume five. The, the point that I'm trying to get at is it's kind of weird to see them so, I guess, dismissive or shocked by how weird and kooky this place is. Mm-hmm. It's like, you, you guys have been around. Yeah. Your uncle's a bird. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know who said it, but and you shoot like lasers out of your eyeballs. Yeah. Like, whoever said that. That was me. That was me. Abstract asks, what do you think of the talents? Cute. Uh-huh. They're kind of cute. Yeah. They're suitable they're cute oh yeah. yeah they're like the little cut out game board pieces mm-hmm. yeah. yeah the collector's been through here the collector yes yes i, I want to see more of the uh the guards guards are fun them. yeah yes definitely they are they they feel very miles and carry they they have that like signature touch i didn't pick up on it until the end but they remind me of papyrus yes yes right like in color scheme as well you've got the red and white like, they're kind of skeleton-faced. They just need the bone-jangling voice now. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Like, these guys just feel like all of them are just types of papyrus. <laughs> Which is fun. I'm here for it. If you're going to rip something off, might as well rip off, like, the coolest part of it. Yeah. Commissar Garcia asks, Is there any particular fairy tale story you believe will be covered that you are excited for? No. Third Crusade. Third. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed, right? Wait, isn't that Indiana Jones? I'm kidding. I'm Wait, kidding. was that actually a fairy tale? I, I will, ne- I will never let that go. <laughs> I will never let it go. A fairy tale. I mean, you can be broad because Pyrrha was kind of like Achilles, effectively, right? Yeah. So you're kind of stretching what you mean by fairy tale, but it's cool. Is there anything Little Mermaid? Uh, there. I, th- I thought we had an Ariel character somewhere. Not yet. Uh, oh, right. uh, um. Or an Ursula bartender, I think, or something like that. My, my, sorry, was the question referring to this specific fairy tale land that they're in now, or just I in think the I show? The Ruby fairy tales, yeah, like, uh, Girl in the Tower, uh, the Tale of the Two oh, Brothers. Oh, okay, never mind. Oh, yeah, I, like that. I see. Yeah. I, I don't know any of them, and I want Third Crusade because it's been seven volumes now. I think we're due <laughs> for some explanation. I want Battle of the Last Stand um, because that sounds lame. <laughs> I would like uh, some Arthurian stuff in there. I would like to see a Merlin or a, a king. I guess Jean is the closest thing to King Arthur, even though he's more Jean of Arc. K.O. Marsali asks, do you think each of the girls represents an aspect of Alex as the character in the story? Who? I need to read the original story. Because- <laughs> yeah, I know. Do we know anything about this? Yeah, I don't know. Was it in an extra book? Who's like... Probably. It, 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 the fairy tale, the yeah. fairy tale book, yeah. yeah. Maybe they might be going that route, but I don't know. It, might, it would be the <laughs> other way around, though, because they obviously wrote the fairy tale before this to fit the characters. So if it is that each of the girls reflects some character aspect of Alex. Alex is written to have those aspects. So it's more so yeah, Alex yeah. reflects one mm-hmm. aspect of each of the girls. Was Alex dangerously horny? Because <laughs> oh my God. if that's so, then it would be Blake. I mean, she kind of has a bunny thing going on with the, the whole bandana thing. <laughs> oh so, <my> God. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Looney Goon asks, do you think it's weird that Weiss is so unwilling to accept that this is a real fa- real life fairy tale, given how many others in this world of fairy tales she already knows are true to some degree? I mean, we just talked about we just, that. We just covered that. That's what I was saying earlier. Yeah, we covered it. It's different when you're an entire yeah. world. Of that. Yeah. And from a certain perspective, I can understand because there's stuff in our world which is weird, right? Like, what what do you mean that you can take a picture and then print <laughs> oh, okay. it out? It's like, what, what, why am I trapped in this piece of paper now? Like, what, what do you mean there is a waterfall underwater? Yeah. Oh, that exists? That's a thing? Yeah, that's a thing. There's, there's some weird and fantastical stuff about our planet. Yeah, this bug goes into like a tiny cocoon and then yeah. just evolves into like it has wings. It yeah. grows wings. Like, what do you mean I can't use this charger for this phone named what? Apple? Yeah. <laughs> this crazy stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What do you mean I can't eat what, it? It's what named do you mean Apple. that there is a literal mind control fungus? What the f*** is that? Why do we have that? <laughs> 
Who made this? <laughs> You've been watching way too much Last of Us. Did. <laughs> <laughs> why did they? Why did Last of Us Part Two come out two years before Last of Us Part One? <laughs> the point is, is that for the characters of Ruby, that's all normal, and it makes sense. Of course, dust yeah. is like normal. Yeah. But you know, walking across the screen and then reappearing—that's yeah. that's weird. It's funky. So I get it. But I think there's something to be said about how fantastical the Ruby world is and how much they've already experienced that's out of their norms, like the maidens, like magic being real, uh, which is not like a well-known thing, right? Um, and then they're coming to this world and go like, well, th- now, well, this is ridiculous before everything else. That made Plus, sense. Plus, like, they also are aware, or at least should be aware, that they fell down the place that... Fuck- uh, bro, brodacious, brodacious. Yeah, <laughs> what, what, what's what's ambrosius, ambrosius, yeah, <laughs> ambrosius. <laughs> uh, like, cause, cause he told them not to fall. Like, he's specifically yeah. like, oh, don't fall. And I'm like, could you add railings? And he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, like, who do you, you know, think I am? Osha? They, what are you six? They're aware that that's how they got here. They fell off the thing. In the pocket dimension. Universe butthole. It should be more like, what is this, like, weird place that we fell to? More so than, like, this is impossible. I just think, again, it's another stage. She's in denial. That's all. And Blake is in bargaining because she wants to go late. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) Blake is a horse. (laughs) Corsica asks... Do you think it's weird that no one in her group of friends notices Ruby falling into depression? (laughs) Would you guys be there for me if I was going through something? No. Nope. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it sucks when wow. you're going through. I hope it emotionally scars you for the rest of your life. <laughs> I hope you reach out to me so I can ignore you. I can't wait to go to your funeral knowing that I could have changed that outcome. <laughs> <laughs> We've kind of already touched on this. Yeah, I, t- yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's weird. Yeah, I think it's weird. I think it's weird. At least her sister, for God's sakes. Should realize it. Ash Barian, who thankfully edited down to one question, they had like four. Uh, if we can assume the girl in the intro is Alex, what role do you guys think she will play in the volume? I think I hit- She's gonna guide Gordon Freeman around and <laughs> open doors for him. And- Rele- release the G-Man. <laughs> From a writer's perspective, if I had to take a guess, I'd say she tries to be their guide and then towards the end backstabs them because she sees that as her only way out of this world. Yeah, um, that w- that's the thing. Like, what if she's been here the whole time? What if that's Neo's origin story, that she was Alex? Well, we already have a book about her origin story. Uh, I I think it's what you guys were saying, or whoever was saying that because of the footprints, I think that she's, like, not there anymore, or she's dead. That was in the past, so she's going to be, the, like, the ghost of Candyland yeah. past and guides them. So When – I actually have a question. In the battle of uh, – in the battle on the bridges – when did Crescent Rose fall? Was it before Yang? No, it was after Yang. It was after Yang. She appears before Cre- – she she wakes up at the same time as Crescent Rose in that opening segment, but it's it's just really weird and surreal. I, I was going to go somewhere with it, but I guess my, my line of thought doesn't pan out. Never mind. Mm-hmm. I hit a nail on the head that they're falling in her footsteps the entire volume, and I don't know if they're ever going to actually physically meet her, but – I, I mean, they would have, then they would have made the model for this opening and made it weird anyway. So I, maybe they'll have flashbacks. Who knows? I'm thinking that they'll either find her still here or find her dead. I like the idea that Britt said about like stabbing her in the back. That was you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, so she tries to use them to get out or like, wait, but then how would the fairy tale have been? Maybe somebody else. I have no idea. Okay. Don't don't think about it. That's simple. Just don't think about it. I think it would be cool if like she was still there it, because that just gives more uh, what what am I trying to say fodder for characters to grapple with the fact that they're in a weird place. You know, having somebody who's been here. Like maybe there was another person. Maybe it's not Alex per se, but maybe there's somebody else that Alex fell down with. Oh. who Alex like left there like maybe it's like oh hey you know you you need you, you know a sacrifice to get out of here or you need to to leave someone behind somebody's got to hold the door open while you walk through or maybe maybe Alex is half of like Hansel and Gretel just different names and her brothers sacrificed <laughs> i don't know why i thought twins <laughs> because you're like oh evil twin 
And then I thought that story. Yeah. I just throwing it out there. Watch that be something. I'm. I'll just. I'll Tw- die. Twins are a, a regular thing in fairy tales, so maybe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Also, like Hazel's already. We already got Hansel, but yeah, <laughs> I, I get her. Point. I mean, I get her point. there's, there's yeah. it's split all over the world. Yeah. I don't know what it is about me and like wanting time skips this volume, but like I, th- I think it would be cool if somebody who had been down here a long time meets uh, you know new humans it's possible that alex is just little oh that's a possibility right did alex age wait if the raccoon aged then alex aged yeah the, the possibility is that alex became little okay. that would be interesting oh that would be that'd be Ooh. cool and the the, the king mm-hmm. or oh, the king when you said little i was just like oh small oh, i forgot it was the mouse <laughs> Yes. Oh, God damn it. You mean the yeah. mouse. Son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> She's got the dr- the drink me uh, potion. Uh, when you said they became little, I thought you meant they became like a child. Like the king. <laughs> this is what the problem with Little's name. It's very hard to talk about Little. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's very little to talk about. Ruby obviously did not name Zwei. All right? We're just putting that out there. Mm. Actually, yeah. you know what? She probably did, because why is a pretty bad name, all things The concerned. writers did, because anime homework. <laughs> she saw Cowboy Bebop, and she's like, oh, another Cory. <laughs> G. Darkon asks, do you think there will be a battle between Ruby and the Knight, with Ruby doing a fatal blow, and then realizing it's John at the last section? I am praying for it. And then what? finishing the fatal blow. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, we talked about it last week. No shot. We have no new information on that. Why would John want to fight Ruby? Grief. Well, why would Ruby want to fight some random knight? Because he's an obstacle? I think it would be cool if Ruby fought Jean just because. I think that'd be pretty cool. Like, yeah. especially because of the whole Penny thing. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Why, why fight a random knight? Maybe the knight's probably an obstacle. Yeah. But uh, this is going under the impression that it's Jean. I mean, if it is Jean, why would he, why would he make himself an obstacle. Mind control, you could literally anything in this world. What if he didn't have a say in it? If I had my dream world where I get to write everything and it's wonderful, um, I'd have like a mini time skip where Jean fell... Like, did you, when did Jean fall down into the hole? He fell last. He, he was, was the last. last. He was the last. Yeah. Eh. It's a fat man's time skip idea. Is there a weird wibbly wobbly thing going on where time is... Like, maybe you fall, your time works in reverse order. Maybe who fell last lands first. Maybe, who, fell who knows? First lands That's all speculation. Like, but I, I, would like a, I would like a fight scene between just Ruby and just Jean. Yes. And I guess Ruby would win. But she doesn't have her sight. But, like, I think it's, Jean and Ruby have a specific dynamic ever since episode one, where, like, they, separate from their own two individual teams, are just good friends. Like, they look out for each other because they're both kind of outsiders. Yeah. Amaraxis. Or Armor Axis, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, if Ruby's production is ultimately handed over to Crunchyroll, do you think it will be for the better, or do you think it will dip even further in quality? Well, they're going to keep the same writers. Yeah. I don't think they're going to change writers. Uh, will they keep the same animators? They already did. Well, they, they, they haven't already. <laughs> True. <laughs> they already got rid of all their they're animators. They were all contract, so it was like it was just all let go. Uh, it, it, possibly the animation will improve. Possibly it'll get worse. There's no real say. I don't know. How did that high high Guardian Spice show do? It was better. Oh apparently. my god! No. <laughs> Fat Fat Man no. Fat Man swears by it that it's okay. No. It's not bad. I think it's better than no. Ruby, or you know, volumes one one through eight anyway. Like okay, then then maybe it has a shot in that case. I mean, also that was a two D show, so it wouldn't be you know animated by the same people who animated that. The Crunchyroll three D stuff that Floof has shown me has been atrocious oh is that like x-arm yeah oh yeah <laughs> x-arm that purple spider anime like oh, ooh. the, the crunchy roll 3d yeah. stuff is so much worse than than ruby visually and uh, like from what i've heard from you know floof it, it's also like just as bad writing wise <laughs> Um, so yeah, no, I, I mean, if Crunchyroll takes over the production of Ruby, it might be for the worse. I, I, I think if Ruby doesn't do well, that, um, you know, HBO and Warner will just cancel it and treat it like a tax write off like they did to the immaculate, um, Batgirl movie, Final Space. Oh, <laughs> Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of resentment for High Guardian Spice and Currency Roll, yeah, and uh, a lot of story behind that. And I, I think it'll be for the worse. Me and Fat Man had a whole discussion about it during our Volume Nine trailer reaction over, uh, yeah, I, and it was 
basically, I think what I ultimately came to is like, I don't really care about the show, but their their marketing was just awful. <laughs> With Ruby, the marketing was the best part of it. So, you know. <laughs> it'll, ba- <laughs> Who knows? it'll balance out, as <laughs> all things should. <laughs> it'll balance out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Final question. Insane Oddball asks, Jello Raccoon versus Little in a battle to the death, who would win? Uh, f***ing Little. I mean, I think the raccoon would win. But, like, uh, is it a popularity contest? Some... In which case, little. <laughs> yeah, I can see a, I can see two scenarios where each one wins. Yeah. I have no idea. I mean, like little has like the moral high ground, but like I, I think the raccoon would would win. The raccoon will die of cuteness. <laughs> That's it. Little's so small, raccoon can't hit him. <laughs> Raccoons are already cute. They're, they're trash pandas. <laughs> Liberty Gibbet, whatever his name is, uh, it, it isn't that cute. But like, I think that a raccoon would have sort of like a natural immunity to cuteness. I'm obviously being facetious, but <laughs> <laughs> we're yeah, we're all being we're all being facetious, Nancy. I had to clear that up, huh? You've never died of cuteness. I see. It, it, it's very very clear. <laughs> Neither of them are very big. <laughs> well, if you're hungry, why didn't you say so? <laughs> okay, <laughs> nice. So, uh, is there anything else we want to discuss? Uh, the Patreon! Yeah. The uncut yeah. version of this video! Mm-hmm. The Discord server, which you can join for one dollar! Or more! Yes, or, or more. Please, God, or more. The books! <laughs> the books on Amazon! Ah, uh, yes! You could go to my Patreon, or you could just buy my book. And really, I think I'd rather you do that. Yes! You could just buy yeah. my book multiple times. I would also appreciate that. The Artificer by Raymond McNeil on Amazon, <laughs> in digital Digital and in print. Digital and print, uh, anywhere, literally anywhere you buy your books. How did you do that, by the way? You're self-published, aren't you? My cousin, who also publishes, she introduced me to this site, uh, Books to Read and Drafts to Digital, uh, and they basically handle distribution of your books to all platforms. Did they take a cut? Yeah, I mean, yes, but- Never mind then. I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> as far as self-publishing goes, they have been a godsend for me, getting Ken like, all ready and ready uh, out to go. So, yeah, any anyone who's, like, they're getting tired of the querying trenches, trust me, I get you, uh, and they want to, you know, dabble their hand in maybe the, um, in the, uh, the self-publishing route, uh, Draft to Digital, Books to Read, those two sites, they, they got Kent ready to go in, in a very, very quick amount of time. So, yeah, give them a shot. I, I swear by them. My cousin swears by them. And uh, I think they're worth it. I have a question. Um, Fat Man and Raymond. So, Fat Man gets to even? And you get the odds episodes, correct? That is correct, yes. Yeah, we're doing it differently this season. Shake it up a little. Gotcha. I take the fractions. <laughs> also, I think we're going to start up the post-episode streams again. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Ah, uh, yes. Probably do that every other week on my channel. Yes. To be determined, right? Yes, to be D. Chances are I will probably not be able to make those. I will try to. Best thing to do is to follow us on Twitter. And yes. you'll get all the info there, yep. along yes. with, you know, the Patreons and stuff. And uh, my, my you know, uh, thing is uh, streams uh, Absolute Union, on Absolute Union's channel, Saturdays. Yeah, Good times. Two waifus <laughs> telling you about life. Yeah. Just a reminder, Fixing Ruby, epi- uh, Volume 6, Episode 9. Sounds good. All righty. Well, with all that out of the way, thank you all so much for watching. And uh, we'll catch you all on the flip side. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye bye. Catch you later. Everybody clap before you turn off your mics. Oh yeah? Clap. You can't see my hands though. <laughs> oh no. Clap. 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 I can't because my hands don't connect. Clap. Everybody clap. Just, just give yourselves clap. a round of applause.